This happened about a year ago. I had just gotten off work at about 2 in the morning after a 12-hour shift. One of the headlights was broken on my car. The right headlight on that car was always going out. I think it might have been a fuse problem or something. I had taken it to a mechanic but it went out again two weeks later. I replaced the bulb on like five separate occasions, but it would still always go out. It was incredibly frustrating, but I was kind of a broke college student so my options were limited. Anyways, I'm driving down this rural country road to get home. It's pitch black outside, and I'm surrounded by farmland and pretty far from any houses or gas stations. As I'm driving, I notice a police car parked on the side of the road with all of his lights off. I'm thinking, oh shit, here we go, because I just know I'm going to get pulled over for that stupid headlight. The headlights on his car flip on, and he pulls behind me. A few moments later, his red and blues turn on. I immediately pull over, prepared to get a tongue lashing and probably a ticket for my light being out. I turn my radio off and roll down my window as he steps out of his car and approaches mine. He comes up to my window, shining his flashlight right in my face as he tells me my light is out. Squinting through the bright light, I apologize and say that I will get it fixed as soon as possible. He shines his light around the inside of my car, probably looking for drugs or weapons or whatever. He looks to be in his late 20s or early 30s, really muscular with light blonde hair, maybe six feet, and wearing a uniform whose sleeves strain against his biceps. License and registration? He asks. I nervously fumble through my glove box and pull out the required documents, handing them to him. He goes back to his car and gets in for about five minutes, and I'm just praying he doesn't give me a ticket. The glaring spotlight turns off, but his red and blue lights are still on. When he comes back up to the window, he gives me back my papers and tells me to get my light fixed as soon as possible, and I promise I will. Then he squats down and rests his head on his arms on my window and asks what I'm out doing tonight. Not really in a friendly way either, still in that authoritative tone that says I better answer. I'm kind of startled, since I thought he would be letting me go at this point. I'm also getting kind of nervous. It's dark, there are no cars or people around, and his face in my window is close enough to mine that it's uncomfortable. I look down at my lap and mumble that I'm getting off of work. Not going out to some parties, or coming back from one. He smirks at me. I gesture to my work shirt and badge. Nope, just trying to get home. I'm getting a little annoyed. He kind of adjusts his crouch, and his face is even closer to mine now, enough so that I can smell his aftershave and feel his breath on me. You single? He demands. I'm getting a little pissed off at this line of questioning. It feels like an interrogation. No, I have a boyfriend. I snap back at him. He treat you right? Why is he asking me this questions? Does he think I'm being physically abused at home or something? Is this standard procedure? What the hell is this? Yes, I say through gritted teeth. Do you live with him, alone, with your folks? I live with my boyfriend. He home tonight? He expecting you soon? No, he's out of town. I snap in annoyance, without really thinking about it. He cocks his head to the side and suddenly my common sense bitch slaps me and my heart is pounding. But my older brother's visiting and staying with me. He's expecting me home any minute, I lie. He studies me for a few moments before nodding and standing up. All right then, have a good night and get that light fixed. I drove off, nervously checking my mirror and hoping he wasn't following me or anything. I didn't get a ticket, so I didn't get his name or badge number, and I didn't report him. I didn't even really know if those questions would justify a complaint or not. Interestingly enough though, I was talking to one of my co-workers about a week after this happened, and she said she had a very similar experience a few months prior. We compared physical descriptions, and we think it was the same officer. It's probably been too long to really do anything about it now, but that's the story. Whenever I drive on that rural road at night now, I'm always a little nervous I'm going to get pulled over again by the same cop. Thank God I finally got a new car, and my headlights are all in working order. I'm a 17-year-old guy from the United Kingdom, and in my area, it is not uncommon to have the odd junkie roaming around, kinda like stray dogs. It was a lovely July day last year, and I had just finished my chores for the day, stoked to get outside. I finished up cleaning and headed out. My female friend, let's call her Levi, met me just outside my front garden as she lived close to me, to aid me on my walk. Now I should mention I was smoking a cigarette-sized blunt at this point, and I was almost done. We were literally just a couple of hundred yards from my house, but we couldn't see it because the path was twisted with houses on each side sheltering it. Then, an older-looking man, about mid-thirties, 
dressed in a normal jogging suit with a backpack and a waterproof jacket over it all, approached us. We had just come around a bend, and it was almost as if he was waiting there. My female friend was to the right of me, may I add. This was the first thing that set off alarm bells in my mind, but no big deal. I assumed that he was just a junkie about to ask us for a cigarette. But before I could even react to seeing this man almost appear out of nowhere, he starts talking into the lapel of his jacket, rhyming off codes and numbers like they were common practice. The man stated he was a police officer and that he was under suspicion that I had marijuana on my person. In my country we have CID, which are basically undercover police officers who wear civilian clothing to catch people off guard. So, me being the trusting person I am, asked the officer what the problem was. By this point, I could clearly tell that this man was giving Levi the creeps, and she stuck close to me. What happens next still baffles me to this day, but also fills me with such relief because I can assure you things could have been much worse. The officer then proceeded to do the usual, stand against the fence legs apart, arms in opposite direction routine, while he searched me. The search set off extreme alarm bells as it wasn't the careful, very delicate police standard. This search was rushed, hastened, and sloppy, and made me feel quite violated. I knew after this that we needed to get out. The man was acting visibly agitated when his frisk search turned up nothing for the drugs he was claiming I had. Out of the blue, things take a turn for the worst. The man starts asking peculiar questions. He asks me heavily about drugs, if I have any, etc. He then asked me to empty my pockets. He searched my tobacco, and then he took my phone. By this point, the man was pushing me around and asking repeatedly, and with growing agitation in every recital of his question, where are you hiding your drugs? I seriously had nothing on me, and this man clearly wanted something that I didn't have, and I knew if I didn't do something he would act out, or so I assumed. He looked at my phone, then up to me. His eyes were crystal blue, like ice. In this short ordeal, I had never made eye contact with this guy, but as my gaze met his, I knew that this man wasn't messing around. He chilled my blood as his stare bore right into me. He asked if he would find drug dealers on my phone, which I can tell you right now, a police officer would not ask. I kept refuting, and then just as quickly as the ordeal started, it was over. The aggression had turned to panic as if a switch had been flipped. The man pushed me away frantically with my friend. He shouted, Fuck off, run away now, get out of here. Obviously we legged it out and didn't look back. Something I should mention, the man didn't address my female friend the whole time. She stood in complete shock through this whole thing. When I was about 14, I had this friend who we will call Sally. Sally was my best friend at the time and we would constantly hang out. So when Sally asked me if I wanted to go with her to a church lock-in, I of course said yes. So how a lock-in works is that you go somewhere at night and you are locked in until the morning. When I was at the lock-in, I remember laying on a sleeping bag and then Sally's family friend approached us and introduced himself. He told me his name was Chad and he was in a police uniform. At the time, I thought he was really cool. We ended up doing a lot at the lock-in and then morning came and it was over. So after the lock-in, I remember Chad had followed me on all the social media I had. When I saw this, I will admit that it kind of weirded me out. After every time I would post, he would always comment something on the post no matter what it was. Fast forward a couple of weeks and it started to get really weird. I ended up going to a ball with my friend Sally and guess who was there? Chad. The whole night I was there, Chad had been constantly hitting on me. At this point, I was so uncomfortable that I was just ready to be home and away from him. Except after the ball ended, my friend's parents were unable to take me home, so guess who took me home? Chad. In this type of situation, I had no idea what to do other than ask my friend to ride with us because there was no way I was going to ride in his car alone. As we were driving, I ended up getting stuck in the seat by Chad, and he kept trying to put his hand on my thigh, which every time I would just brush him away. Until finally I was home, and was able to get away from him. After this night, I knew something was off about him, so I stopped replying to all of his comments. He then would start messaging me on Facebook, and DM me on Instagram. He kept messaging me asking why I was not replying and was asking me out on dates. Let's keep in mind that Chad was 32 and I was 14. When he started asking me out, that's when I decided to block him from everything, which I figured would stop everything, but sadly it didn't. 
Then a couple of days after blocking him, I was in the kitchen, and I had looked through the window and saw a patrol car in front of my house, which again, I thought nothing of, until the cop rolls down his window, and I see that it is Chad. For weeks I would always see his patrol car driving down our street, or sitting in front of my house. He also began to make new Instagram accounts and would message me from them. This went on for weeks until finally I told my parents about it. At the time, I did not know what to do about it because the police are supposed to protect you, and Chad was doing the complete opposite. After telling my parents, they made me message him on Facebook and tell him that if he didn't stop, that they would go to the police. That sentence itself was kinda ironic since he is the police to begin with. After messaging him, Chad stopped and I didn't hear from him again. It wasn't until years later that I heard his name because I saw in the news that Chad was arrested for molesting a 15-year-old girl. So, wherever you are Chad, which I hope is prison, I hope to never see you again.